If you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me talk a bunch about how digestion and nutrition really affect your brain and your mental health. So we often think of mental health like it's some sort of like genetically inherited chemical imbalance in the brain. And there probably is some truth to the genetics help making you more predisposed. Um, but the chemistry in your brain is not separate from the rest of your body. So the uh, way the brain cells function, the quantities of neuro and, and ratios of uh, neurotransmitters, those things all relate to what's going on in your body. And there's a whole bunch of mechanisms, <clears throat> but we'll just go over one right now. So this is to do with how the brain detoxes itself. So if we look at this, I'm just kind of drawing some of your organs here really badly, but if we pretend this is the brain, the way the brain eliminates toxins, and toxins aren't some like woo-woo thing like, oh, like you have to not eat this food in order to not have toxins and eat this clean diet so you don't have toxins. Your body's gonna make toxins no matter what you do. It's just a part of cellular uh, activity. The cells have waste products, they have broken down proteins, they have things they need to get rid of, and the brain cells are no different. So the time that your brain detoxes is at night. Every night, your brain cells shrink by about 30%, making space in between all those cells for lymphatic fluid to come in between. Lymphatic fluid, or we call glymphatic fluid in the brain. It's actually your cerebral spinal fluid it's actually a very recent discovery. Um, but as those cells shrink, that fluid surrounds them, then the cells excrete their toxins into that fluid, and then as you exit that deep sleep state, those cells inflate again and push the fluid out, Then that fluid has to drain somewhere. Lymphatic fluid needs to go and be processed in lymph nodes and then make it into your bloodstream. So those toxins have to get into the lymph, out of the brain, into the bloodstream, and eventually they're gonna come down and get processed by the liver, this green guy. It's not really green in your body, but it makes green bile. So the liver processes those toxins and then it has to do something with them. The toxins don't just disappear. So they have to pour the toxins with the lymphatic fluid into the small intestine. And so, or sorry, pour them with the bile into the small intestine. The bile is part of your digestion. So your stomach, everybody knows their stomach acid, right? It's kind of breaking down the food before it sends it down to the small intestine. But then the bile comes from the liver, and it's a lot of it is just to uh, break down fats, <clears throat> make the fats more absorbable. But that bile is also containing your uh, toxins that have come from your brain, or really all over your body, and that have been broken down by the liver and now need to be excreted. So they get dumped into the small intestine, it all moves through the small intestine, eventually gets to the large intestine, and the large intestine excretes it, right? And so what you might notice here is those toxins getting out of your brain have several places where they could get stuck. So let's say, um, I mean, this can come from up, downstream, right? So the large intestine can be stuck, we call it constipation, or even if you're not like totally constipated, just kind of slow, dry, sticky bowels that just kind of don't move very often or very swiftly, um, is usually a sign that things are kind of sticking around here longer than they ought to. So that's not a good thing, and that'll cause that all that system to kind of back up. If the large intestine is not moving, then the small intestine is not moving, then the stomach's not emptying its contents, and the liver's not emptying its contents. This will often result in acid reflux because things are stuck in the stomach and start shooting back up, um, but it will also often congest the liver. So now the liver can't break down toxins. So where's that lymphatic fluid full of your brain's toxins gonna go? Well, it really doesn't have anywhere to go. So now the brain, that lymph is trying to wash it out, but the lymph is just overloaded with toxins. And now your brain is just kind of swimming, swimming in toxins every night, right? And so you can see how constipation on its own could potentially produce some serious brain problems. But this problem can be located anywhere downstream, right? So if you have issues with your small intestine, you have bacterial overgrowth and things are fermenting there and that's causing things to not move along very well and then that stagnation comes up to the liver. Or if the liver itself is just congested because you're you know, you're eating fast food and junk food and stuff all the time, and that's congesting the liver. Liver liver's like your pharmacist or your chemist in your body, so the more new chemicals you're introducing to your body, the more kind of processed foods with a thousand ingredients, right, and lotions with a thousand, you know, new ingredients that were invented in the last 20 years <clears throat> are getting put in, in your body. Liver's the one who has to deal with all that, so the more kind of toxic load you're putting on your body, the more that'll stress the liver and then the liver can't deal with that uh, toxin drainage from the lymph, right? And of course, the, the problem could be at the brain. There can be a lack of um, movement of lymph coming out of the brain just on its own. It's just kind of congested there. 
there's like an old Ayurvedic uh, therapy called Nasya that you can do that sort of opens up the brain and helps to make sure that those lymph, lymph is moving from the brain, or as they say, glymph from the brain. I don't know why they change the name, but they, <laughs> they call it glymph in the brain. And then of course you could just be getting bad sleep. And as I said, deep sleep, this uh, REM state of sleep is when those brain cells shrink to make space for the lymph to pull the toxins out. And so if you're not getting deep sleep, your brain's not gonna be detoxing, which is part of why when you wake up and you haven't had a very good sleep, you feel like brain fog, like your eyes don't work very well, you can't think very well, right? You need like a coffee to wake your brain up. And a lot of that's just because it hasn't uh, been able to go through that detox process. So basically making sure that all these, or I kind of, the stomach, not super involved here, but <clears throat> making sure that all these organs are working really well can make a huge difference on the health of your brain and your mental health. And you might be really surprised how, what you've thought of as your personality, like, oh, I'm a person who tends to be afraid all the time, or I'm a person who gets angry really easily. How much of that stuff really just relates to how well these internal organs are functioning. So obviously, um, I teach a lot of Qigong and a huge part of Qigong is improving the flow and circulation of lymphatic fluid and blood, um, lowering stress, bringing healing uh, blood flow to all the internal organs through various movements and stress relief techniques. So all that stuff works super great, but diet can play a really huge part as well. So a diet that soothes the intestines, moves things along, detoxes the liver, um, provides nutrition that helps the brain with its detox process. All of that is going to really help as well. It goes really well with uh, Qigong and movement practice. So that's kind of a lot to get into in this video, but I've actually got a free uh, little program I've made that if you want to just try out a diet and uh, movement and breath work sort of program that brings this idea all together and just see what happens when your organs are functioning optimally, how much better do you actually feel emotionally and mentally and how much, or maybe you're even a little mentally sharper or you sleep better. All those things can happen a lot easier when the organs work better. So often with uh, mental health or really with any uh, problem in Western medicine, it tends to be like, like really hyper focus on the thing that's wrong. So like if you have a problem, well, in this case with your brain chemistry, right, then they always try to fix the brain chemistry. It's like, oh, like, well, there's a lack of serotonin or there's a lack of dopamine. There's a lack of GABA, GABA. Then let's introduce some drug that in increases the production of that thing or stops the conversion of that thing. But I think it, uh, often it works a lot better to focus like oh, everything around the problem instead of on the problem, right? So instead of trying to focus on that brain chemical to focus on how healthy is your liver? How's your digestion working? How much are you exercising, right? How deep are you breathing? Your breath is what's kind of helping that lymphatic fluid and everything to move along there as well. The diaphragm pushing and pulling on these things. How well are you sleeping, right? So if we haven't fixed the foundations, right, then why are we trying to fix the super intricate complexities of the brain? Doesn't seem like a great idea, although again, none, none of my work is ever encouraging you to stop taking psychiatric meds that you're already on or to stop seeking help. But I do think that we really need to focus on having actual health throughout our whole body and all of our organs if we want a healthy brain because that brain, it's being nourished right by the proteins and everything that you're pulling out of your food right it's being energized and fueled by the carbohydrates and fats and everything that you pull out of your food it's being bathed in your blood the blood is flowing through the brain just like any other organ where does that blood come from it comes from the food you digest the liver filtering and, and detoxifying that blood the kidneys filtering and detoxifying that blood the lymphatic fluid flowing in and out of that blood so the brain is not in any way separate from the rest of your body and the rest of your overall health. And so that's what this little program does. I'll have a link. Uh, if, the, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll just be in the description. If you're watching this on Instagram or something, then just go to my profile and you'll find links to this kind of stuff. And it's just a little mini course you can do just to like try out my philosophy and see if it works for you. And if it works, you can do it as often as you like. You can just stay on it for a long time, but it'll just be a short period of time to just experiment with this stuff and see how working on the physical aspects of things can really help with that neurochemical aspects of things. So click the link or go to the profile or whatever you gotta do to get there. And I really look forward to seeing you there and we'll see what we can get done.